Another new team has their eyes set on full-time Cup Series racing next year. Who could it be and who will their driver be? How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove, midweek edition of the show. Thank you for joining us. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you do not miss a thing. A ton of news to react to this week. Plenty more to talk about today, and I have a feeling NASCAR is not slowing down, so you're not going to want to miss anything. Make sure you are subscribed. Lots of exciting things coming out on this channel, including earlier this week, Christopher Bell joined the show. If you missed that episode from Monday, go check it out. Anyway, that is enough self-promotion. We've got a lot to get to today. Another team is joining the NASCAR. Car Cup Series this coming season, the first year of the next gen car. We're going to talk all about who it is. It's a familiar name. We're also going to speculate who their driver or drivers could be because that has not been discussed yet. But before we get to that, let's tie up some of the loose ends from the first half of this week. Talladega TV ratings are in and they are quite good actually. In fact, this past weekend's Cup Series race at Talladega was viewed by nearly as many people as this year's Daytona 500 was watched by, which that's kind of a backhanded compliment because this year's Daytona 500 seriously rain delayed and everything was pretty terrible in the TV ratings front but still Talladega the what ninth race of the season got some pretty great numbers here's from Adam Stern Fox earned a 2.81 rating and 4.701 million viewers for Sunday's Geico 500 at Talladega up 4% from the 2019 edition and one of the highest rated races since last year's May Darlington event after the pandemic break and he confirms it was the highest rated sports event of the weekend and that was by a long shot I saw a chart of like all the sporting events from this past weekend and the Cup Series race had like more than double the viewership of the next biggest event. But pretty good numbers by themselves, especially when you're comparing it to the same race two years ago. The fact that it still went up 4%, that's pretty great. Shows some good promising signs that NASCAR viewership has somewhat stabilized. Meanwhile, pretty much the rest of the sports world, their viewership fluctuates and more often than not, other major sports leagues are seeing decreases. NASCAR is no stranger to this or NASCAR is not exempt from that list. They've seen in general, I'd say more decreases than increases over the past couple of years, but largely they have somewhat stabilized, especially compared to the, the free fall they were in around 2016 through 2018. So pretty good news overall for Talladega and for NASCAR, holding fairly steady on the TV ratings front, especially compared to other major events like the Oscars. Monday night, I believe, saw a more than like 60% decrease year to year in viewership. It was by far the least viewed edition of that event ever. I know I don't really care, and I know most of you watching the show don't really care about the Oscars, but the point is major special TV events just broadly are all tanking in ratings last couple of years so NASCAR holding steady this weekend is very good news. Not even just holding steady, going up compared to two years ago. Like, that's pretty great. Anyway, good news from the TV ratings front. Just wanted to mention that. Let's talk about driver sponsorship, specifically that of one Kyle Larson. That was the hot story all off season. Oh, he's going to Hendrick, but is he too hot to touch? Are any major sponsors, corporate partners going to take a chance and help fund that team? And for the longest time, the answer was no. A couple of Rick Hendrick's businesses, you know, Nations Guard, HendrickCars.com were the only primary logos on that race car. Well, Earlier this week, it was confirmed that Vaveline has stepped up as a major sponsor of Kyle Larson. They will be the primary on the five car for three races this year and three races next year. We'll see those colors on the five car at Nashville in a couple of months, the summer Daytona race, and the Bristol night race in the playoffs. Vaveline's also stepping up to sponsor William Byron for two races this year and next. They'll be on Byron's car here in just a couple weeks at Darlington, and actually they revealed a pretty awesome throwback scheme to Neil Bonnet. I love it when they get the colors and the sponsor even exactly right. This is pretty pretty cool. Like I love when the 24 car throws back to some Jeff Gordon scheme as much as the next guy, but it's also pretty dang cool when they can do something a little more outside the box. Neil Bonnet, one of the greats of the sport, one of the great legends. That's a pretty cool throwback scheme. Vaveline will also be on Byron's car at the Charlotte Roval much later in the season. So great to see Vaveline, who's been a long time Hendrick sponsor, stepping up to sponsor not just Byron, but more importantly, Kyle Larson, a guy who doesn't have much sponsorship to speak of at this point. Every little bit helps. Kyle Larson, with the exception of talent, Talladega this weekend when he blew up on lap one has been off to a pretty dang good start with Hendrick Motorsports winning early on in the season. They've been pretty consistently fast so far. Hopefully the folks at Hendrick Motorsports are able to maybe start pitching Kyle Larson to potential sponsors and maybe get some bites here and there. Perhaps that's how this Vaveline deal worked out. Good news for Kyle Larson fans and for Larson himself and for Hendrick Motorsports himself that he's got a new primary sponsor for even just a handful of races. Every little bit helps, you know? Hey, three is better than the basically zero that he was running with until this announcement. So 
good news there. Now, let's talk about the newest Cup Series team, or what's expected to be the newest Cup Series team. It's still early in 2021. We could hear some other announcements, but 2022, the beginning of the next-gen era, a brand new car, it's all very likely to draw interest from new potential team owners. Well, a familiar name in the NASCAR Xfinity Series confirmed today that they will run full-time in the NASCAR Cup Series next season, fielding at least one full-time driver and car, and possibly even a second if they can get things to fall into place correctly. That team, maybe no surprises, is Colleg Racing. Colleagues made a couple one-off Cup Series starts actually this year. In fact, Kaz Grala finished 28th in the Daytona 500, then AJ Allmendinger got a top 10 at the Daytona Road Course, and this past weekend at Talladega, Kaz Grala again finished 6th at Talladega. So they've dabbled the last couple years with the occasional Cup Series start here or there, and there have been rumblings, rumors behind the scenes for years. In fact, even the owners have addressed them. They've been talking about trying to go Cup Series racing at some point, like full-time Cup Series racing, but it has not happened yet. Today, Matt Colleagues speaking to Mike Bagley and friends on Sirius XM NASCAR Radio confirmed that they will go full-time Cup Series racing this next season. Speaking to NBC Sports, he gave some more details. Colleague told NBC, we definitely know we're going to run at least one Cup car. If we have the right situation, we certainly could run two cars or do it on a part-time basis. Matt Collett goes on to say that his goal is to dominate the Cup Series. That's his words. He said, we're young. I'm 48 years old. Our president, Chris Rice, is 47 years old. So we've got a lot of years left. We've got a lot of energy. We want to accomplish a lot of things. When asked about the potential difficulty of securing an ever-important charter, something that guarantees you entry into every race, plus some other little perks, Matt Colleague simply replied that he's not losing any sleep over it. So either they have something lined up behind the scenes, or they just think they can make it work without a charter, which more power to them. So it certainly sounds like this is real. This is happening. There's nothing in the way. There's nothing stopping Colleague Racing from moving to the Cup Series. Now, I couldn't find anything that discussed whether this meant they were abandoning their Xfinity program altogether. I would think they would still keep those cars, at least a couple of them, full-time in Xfinity when chasing their Cup Series dreams. But I have not seen anything to confirm that. There also has been little to no discussion about who their at least one full-time Cup Series driver will be. I mentioned some names like Cas Grala has made a couple starts for them in the last two years in the Cup Series. He also made that uh, start filling in for Austin Dillon last year at the Daytona Road Course where he finished seventh in, I think it was his first ever Cup Series race. AJ Allmendinger ran, you know, of course, the Cup Series race at the Daytona Road Course this year for colleagues. So Allmendinger, though, he's, I think, 39 years old. I don't know that he would be their first choice to be their full-time Cup Series driver, but maybe, maybe at first, maybe a brand new team. They want a veteran driver there. Who knows? Justin Haley's another driver who's been close to Colleague. In fact, he won three races in the Xfinity Series for Colleague last year and made it to the championship four, so he could be an option. If Colleague is going to go with younger drivers, I believe it's going to be between Kaz Grala and Justin Haley. Both are 22 years old. Haley has had statistically much more success in the Xfinity and Truck Series, where he's won, I believe, three races in each series. Kaz Grala has never run a full season of Xfinity. He has run one full season of Trucks a few years back with GMS where he became the youngest winner in Daytona history. But that is, as of currently, his one and only win across any of NASCAR's three main national series. So for going with past success, I think you got to lean Justin Haley, but Kaz Grala has certainly turned some heads, especially last year in that Daytona road course race where he came out of nowhere to contend. <laughs> I think it's a coin flip. There's a lot I like about both drivers. I honestly might lean towards Kaz Grala, even though he doesn't quite have the, the on-track success in Xfinity and trucks that Justin Haley has but he wanted a lot of short tracks growing up. I like his confidence. I like his personality, and he does seem to be a great road course racer. He seems to be wise beyond his years. If I was going to go with the young driver in my heart, I think I'd pick Kaz Grala, but Justin Haley, I believe, might attract a bit more funding than Kaz Grala does, so that might make him very appealing to Matt Colleague and Chris Rice. He could be their full-time Cup Series driver next year. If they go with a young driver, I think they'll pick Justin Haley, but in my head, I might lean towards Kaz Grala. I don't think you can go obviously wrong with either choice. I think they're both pretty solid young drivers that you can start a team with. But that being said, a veteran like an AJ Allmendinger might make a lot of sense as well. And let's not discount Jet Burton, who just won this past weekend at Talladega in the Xfinity Series for Colleague. He's in their system. He could be a possibility as well. I'm 
skeptical, but you never know. The questions I have about Colleg Racing and their Cup Series future, will they continue to have a technical alliance with Richard Childress Racing the way right now they basically do in the NASCAR Xfinity Series? That's part of what's helped them get more competitive the last few years. I know with the next gen car, perhaps technical alliances won't be quite as important as they are now, but they'll still be important. There are still valuable resources, I'm sure, that can be shared. So will Colleg continue to work with RCR and the other Chevy teams? Will they continue to get that kind of support if they move to Cup? I believe, and it sounds like what Matt Colleg believes is that they will be a competitive team the moment they get to Cup. But like when I say competitive, I don't mean championship contending, but like competitive in the same way that Richard Childress Racing is competitive in Cup. Like Austin Dillon made the playoffs last year, but he was never really a threat to do much else. You know, I think Colleg will be capable of putting cars on track next year that can win maybe like a race a season like the way last year Austin Dillon won that Texas race with some kind of outside the box pitch strategy like it may take some bold or interesting strategy decisions for Colleg to find victory lane next year or in the future but I think it's certainly possible I think Colleg especially depending on who they put behind the wheel could be a playoff contender next season. So that's exciting. New teams are great for NASCAR, but it's even better when those new teams are also at least fairly competitive. They don't all have to be championship contenders. They don't have to be able to compete with Hendrick and Penske right out the gates, right off the bat. Nobody expects that of any new team. But the more teams we get out there, like Trackhouse, who's been pretty solid, consistently cracking the top 20 and occasionally leading laps this season, the better. And I think Colleague will look a lot like that Trackhouse organization, especially at first. Now, if Colleague goes all in and actually runs two full-time drivers next season. I would worry they're, they'd be spreading themselves a little too thin too quickly, especially if they're also maintaining their Xfinity team and running for points and running for a championship over there. Like, I, I get it. Like, Matt Colleg said it. They're young, they're energetic, they're really enthusiastic, they're in it. Like, that's awesome, but... I mean, you can still spread yourself too thin too quickly. If they do go cup racing, I kind of hope they stick with just one full-time team at first. If you want to run a part-time team here and there, give Almendinger some shots at road courses, fine, that's great, but I think it'd be best if they focus on one contender next season in cup and then keep their Xfinity program rolling because they've emerged as one of the top contenders in Xfinity the last few years, and it's been really fun to watch. But you heard my predictions. Again, no discussions about drivers or anything here today, but my guess is that it will be between Kaz Grala and Justin Haley for that full-time Time slot. Perhaps AJ Allmendinger will get some seat time. Perhaps both Grala and Haley will get full time rides if you know funding allows it. We'll see. You heard my predictions. Let me know down below what you guys think about Colleague Racing's apparent move to the Cup Series next season. Could there be a wild card driver we're not even thinking about that shows up to take one of those seats? Who knows? Let me know down in the comment. Give me your wildest theories. But that is going to do it for this episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you are not already so you do not miss any future. NASCAR news updates, predictions, or exciting driver interviews. As always, a huge thank you to my amazing Patreon supporters as well. I couldn't do this show without your continued support. I got at least one more video planned for later this week. If you missed it yesterday, we talked about the leaked images of the Ford and Chevy next gen cars. Very, very interesting. I hear NASCAR is still looking for the person who leaked those photos. I would not want to be that guy or gal at this point, but we talked about those on the show yesterday. Very exciting episode. Go check that out if you missed it. I will see you all very, very soon. Have a great rest of your day.